Service Matters. Yes, we're live here on AM 790 WPRV. Yes, and we're also uh, at the multi-district conference. It's taking place at the uh, Providence uh, Convention Center, the site for uh, 2017 multi-district conference. It's rotary folks, it's people helping people. There are four districts here, 7890, 7910, and of course 7950 right here in the general area of Providence, and of course, 7980. I'm Dave Clifton. I'm Rona Mann. This is exciting, Dave. It certainly is. We'll be here for two hours from 2 to 4 p.m., and this is a simulcast, uh, not just uh, radio, AM 790, but uh, we uh, want to thank uh, Brockton Community Access Television for also uh, putting this on camera and I know, Rona, we've said many times that I have a face for radio. You do. But I have to yeah. smile today because we are on community television. Our first guest, and we have many guests that will join us. we got a great lineup. Rotary is an organization of men and women, business and professional people, a humanitarian organization. And, of course, they're represented in over 200 countries. They have uh, 35,000 Rotary clubs, about 1.2 a million Rotarians plus, and they're represented in 534 districts. We have a uh, past district governor joining us here on the air, and he's from uh, the great state of Connecticut. He also is a past vice president of Rotary International. He has served as a member of the board of directors. His name is Frank Collins, a good friend, a terrific Rotarian. And Frank, uh, you've been around a long time in Rotary, about 45 years. About Welcome. 45 years, yes. So you've seen lots of changes, lots of errors, uh, things come and go. That's true. Tell us, uh, how do you feel about Rotary today after all those years? I think Rotary is, uh, is still booming. It still has a wonderful opportunity to do things. My wife and I have traveled to over 64 countries of the world. Wow. And. Uh, you meet people from all over the world. And you Different. find that Rotarians are the same everywhere, don't you? You really do. You go to these countries, and regardless of the politics or whatever of the country, you're meeting people who want to do something for either their own people and or their own people and people outside their country. And it's just a, it's just a heart stopping thing to do. And as we both know, Frank, uh, they have a terrific motto, service above self. Rotary's mission is to do good in the community, to reach beyond, to do good in the world. Frank, you've seen it, uh, and we've been so fortunate to have the leadership. Uh, I know it changes every year. Do you think that's a good thing, that we change leadership from the club level to the district level, to the zone level, and of course, Rotary International? Well, I'll tell you, 45 years ago, when I was first considering joining Rotary, out of the JCs in those days, uh, it, it's, it really puzzled me. I said, how, how can this work? Now, 45 years later, it works. No, no question about it. Well, you obviously came here, and that would have been my question. What brought you, after 45 years, out of East Hartford to yet another convention? Well, it's people like David and so on, people I've known, people He's I've a great worked guy. with, people I've worked with, and uh, the opportunities to get some new ideas. Uh, believe it or not, after 45 years, you still get new ideas. <laughs> you it's, learn something every day. You and learn something every day. Frank, and, uh, let's talk for a minute about uh, absolutely in polio now. Uh, you had been around when it first started in the Philippines. That's correct. And of course, uh, we're getting closer to the finish line. What can you say to our listening audience out there and our viewing audience? How do you feel about us continuing uh, to do the best we can to get to the finish line? Well, we started this thing, so let's finish it. And uh, for those of you on radio, you can't see this. Those of you on TV, we're this close, <laughs> this close That's of right. getting it accomplished. I believe there's only five or six reported cases uh, recently, so we're down where it was all over the world when we started this. We're following through. And it's, it's our number one project. And with Bill and Melinda Gates behind us, Absolutely. matching the dollars, we're going to get there. 
And we also want to thank uh, the World Health Organization, UNICEF Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Absolutely. They've made it happen. We thank Bill Gates for his uh, timely donations, as you mentioned, Rona. And we certainly thank all the Rotarians around the world. And Frank, we want to thank you for all the good things you've done for Rotary. Uh, we're very proud of uh, your accomplishments. Keep up the good work, and we hope to see you and your wife at future conferences. Please say hi to Seal. We, we intend to keep going. <laughs> very good. Thank 45 you all very, more. Thank, thank you, you all very Frank. Much. That's Frank Collins uh, from East Hartford, Connecticut. He's a gentleman who has stepped up to the plate to do the best he can and to serve Rotary, which ends up serving people around the world. Okay, we have another guest that's joining us, uh, Frank Wago. He's a district governor twice. Another honcho. <laughs> Someone said a glutton for punishment. I'd say let's change that around by saying a guy who enjoys leading Rotarians who step up to the plate. Frank uh, represents uh, District 7890. Maybe you can tell our audience, those people who are not Rotarians, where is 7890? What does it encompass? Um, we're the upper district in Connecticut. Oh, the upper crust. The upper crust. Okay. And western Massachusetts. Ah, okay. All the way to the Vermont border. So you're up in Ridgefield and that yeah. area and then yeah. right into West Springfield. Yep. Okay. Very good. So Frank, uh, what is it like uh, serving uh, twice as a district governor? I know it uh, involves lots of time, lots of effort. He's yeah. still smiling. You know, smiles, it smiles connote Rotary. Uh, I love to come to this house of friendship and they describe all the projects that they're doing in the world. And some of them have never been to the projects, but their enthusiasm and their smiles, because they know they're making a difference, although they'll never see the difference, they just know in their heart that that difference is made. The second time being district governor, I've had the opportunity for 16 years between governorships to travel the world. And I've seen the smiles that Rotary puts on people's faces. Uh, I saw a boy, two years old, was stricken with polio, and he was getting his first set of braces at 15. So for 13 years, he looked up from the ground, and I got to see him take his first steps. And I can tell you... Did you, you do it with a dry eye? Oh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm tearing up as I'm telling you this. Absolutely. I was supposed to, give the, uh, supposed to be the keynote speaker, and, and they had this, uh, this little boy walk across the stage, and I could see the smile on his face. It was like, thank you, Rotary. Now I'm just like you. He could walk. Um, putting smiles on faces and being able to see the smiles is the specialness. Now, behind me is a little sign. And on that sign, there's giving a child two drops. And I remember being in Africa, and I saw this woman with her child, and they were giving her the two drops, and I couldn't see her whole body. But her smile on her face that my child will not get polio. Now, that's significant. But when she walked away, I noticed that she had a crutch in a withered left leg. So that smile was so much more meaningful because my son she, will get what I could. My son will not suffer what I have to suffer for the rest of my life. That's a special smile. Frank, I know that you get a lot of personal satisfaction from uh, doing good things for Rotary and seeing smiles on young kids' faces. We want to yeah. thank you so much, Frank, uh, for uh, serving as a district governor twice. Uh, we're very happy to have you here in the New England area. Are you going to go for the hat trick? Frank Wago, uh, who joins us from Connecticut. He's have a fun at the conference. Past district governor twice. If you just joined us, folks, we're on AM 790 WPRV. We're being televised on Brockton uh, Community Access Television. Our next guest is going to be the president of Rotary International. His name is John Germ. And John Jim, of course, is from Chattanooga, Tennessee. And uh, he's got his wife Judy with him. And Judy is with him, and uh, we enjoyed uh, listening to him speak last night. He's the keynote speaker here at the conference tonight. And uh, we're going to take a short break uh, so that we can uh, be prepared to chat with uh, the president of Rotary International, John Jim from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Stay with us, folks. Welcome back. And big thank you to uh, Shelby, our producer. We're live here on AM 790 WPRV. This is indeed a simulcast. 
we thank uh, Brockton Community Access Television for covering us here on AM 790 WPRV. I'm Dave Clifton here along with Rona Mann, and we have a special guest. When you think about Rotary we got International, two of them. that's correct. When we have, uh, when you think about Rotary International, you're thinking about 1.2 million Rotarians plus 35,000 Rotary clubs, 534 districts, and we're represented in over 200 countries. And today we have the president, the leader of the organization, and I know he'd be the first to tell you that uh, the things that he does are as good as the people he surrounds himself with. He's got lots of people that work with him, that help him. We thank you so much, uh, John Germ and your wife Judy, for joining us here. You must be uh, tired, Ombre. Welcome. Both of you for <laughs> traveling so much uh, to pass on the message of Rotary. Yeah, I was wondering, when you wake up in the morning in a hotel, do you have to think for a minute, what town am I in, what country am I in? No, the most important thing to do is think up when you got to go to the bathroom during the night, remember <laughs> what side the bed or where the bathroom is. So that's the, that's the most challenging thing. Uh, Notice, folks, thing. he's not from New England by the way he speaks. He's from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah. We recognize the accent. And John, I don't have uh, an accent. You do. That's right. I have the Boston accent. <laughs> but we're in Providence, and I know, John, uh, you played an active role over the years and still continue to do so with the eradication of polio. Tell us about it. I know that uh, Mike McGovern, the main man, he is handling that same responsibility now. But tell us about uh, how close we're getting as we uh, approach the finish line. Well, you know, Dave, one of the things that's uh, interesting is that most of the people, in, especially in the United States, do not even think about uh, polio, and especially the younger people. I've met a lot of people that say, what do you mean polio? Polio's been gone forever. We don't have polio. And I said, oh, yes, you do. And just think about what happened in uh, California when they had the outbreak of measles. We hadn't had any measles in the United States. So it can happen, and it can come in from any other country because that virus is carried in the human body and it is uh, transmitted from human to human. It is not a, any other animal disease or mosquito or anything like that. But when we started in uh, 1985 and actually Rotary started in 1979 uh, by providing a grant of $760,000 from the Rotary Foundation Health, Hunger and Humanity Grant to provide vaccine and vaccinate six million children in the Philippines. And that program was so successful that the question was asked, can this be done around the world? And the answer was yes, it can be done around the world. And it's gonna take a lot of money, it's gonna take a lot of volunteers. And in 1985, uh, we started with over a thousand cases of polio a day. Just think about it, a thousand children that were being affected every day and some of us can remember, and maybe a lot of your listeners can remember, when as children we couldn't go to the public swimming pool. We couldn't go out that. and uh, play with other kids in the summertime for fear uh, that we were going to get polio. I remember the iron lungs. And the iron lungs. And I can tell you a great story about the iron lungs if you uh, a little bit. But we're down now from 1,000 cases a day in 125 countries uh, to where you only have five cases. So in 2017, wow. five cases, three cases in Afghanistan and two in Pakistan, uh, none in Nigeria, uh, but Nigeria has not gone two years yet. Uh, so you have to go uh, three, three years. You have to go three, three years, years to be officially to certified. be official certified. So uh, we're working on it. We're going to get there. Uh, the world has spent about $11 billion on trying to do this. Uh, Rotarians have spent $1.6 billion. Uh, so we have to continue to vaccinate over 400 million children a year uh, to provide surveillance in over 72 different countries until we eradicate this disease, this virus. And we're going to get there. We, it will happen. We will keep our promise to the children of the world to eradicate polio. And you're hearing it folks from the president of Rotary International, uh, he is telling us that uh, we owe it as a gift to the children of the world. A big thank you to the World Health Organization, UNICEF, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 
And we also thank Bill Gates for right. his timely donations. Gates Foundation, yes. Yeah, you know, we have a great partnership. It was Rotary that started this program. It wasn't until uh, in the 1988 that the World Health Organization came on board uh, and said, yes, that we can do this. And that's when CDC, UNICEF, uh, and WHO came on. But then in 2007, uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation came on board. And they gave us a challenge that if we would do a uh, hundred thousand dollars, I mean, a million dollars, they get. I get it straight in a minute. They they would match us two for one for what we did. So we started off with a hundred million dollar campaign. Uh, about halfway through, they changed it. Said we'll give you another hundred and fifty million if you'll do another hundred. So we ended up with a two hundred million campaign. Uh, thanks to Rotarians. Uh, also, non-Rotarians who believe in what we're trying to do, we raised $228 million, and uh, we're still a partner with the Gates uh, Foundation today. So and we're gonna they're get tremendous to the, partners. We'll get to the finish line. Uh, Judy, what is it like to be the first lady of Rotary International? She looks tired I know that you, <laughs> when I see that expression. You made a lot of trips. You, it's still not over yet, but I'm sure you're enjoying the opportunity to travel with your husband, the president of Rotary International. It's absolutely wonderful. It is an honor and a privilege to do what we do for Rotary. And I feel honored to get to participate because I am not a Rotarian, but in my heart, I am a Rotarian. So I get to go with him and get to participate in a lot. And I'm real thankful for that, that I'm included. Well, this brings up my next question, and either one of you can answer. Since July 1st of last year, when you took over, President John, you've been all over the world. You have met people of every color and religion and culture. Are we in a good place? Is the world in good shape, do you think, or the rotary world? Well, they're looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can answer that better than yeah, I Yeah, we got do. two microphones, Mr. President. One is TV, and the other one is yeah. radio. Okay. Uh, I think the world is in excellent shape. Uh, obviously, uh, we uh, hear of all, all the bad things that are going on in the world. We hear about the refugee crisis. Uh, we were in Beirut, Lebanon, and they have actually a population of uh, about 1.3 million, but they had 1.4 million refugees. Uh, so their infrastructure is not carrying it. We, we hear all of those stories. We have seen so much good work, though, with how the communities in the world are reacting to helping people that are in need, uh, whether it be through providing temporary shelter or food or education, uh, computers for classrooms, uh, building toilet blocks so girls can go to school uh, so that they're not embarrassed about having to go to the bathroom after they reach the age of 10 to 12 years old. So there's so much good work out there. But one of the most exciting things, I think, is a lot of the work that's being done through Interact, uh, RILA, Rotaract, some of the youth organizations where we have the opportunity to help educate and to learn from the young people. That's our future in Rotary. And that is our future. Those are, those are the people that's not just our future in Rotary, those are the people that's going to lead our country. And so it behooves us to be very involved with them and to help get them involved in our organization. But there is so much good work going on and uh, unfortunately, it's easier to talk about the bad things than it is the good things. Well so, said, uh, Mr. President. I know that tonight you're going to give a keynote speech. Uh, we got four districts here in this particular area yeah. from Zone 32 that are very happy that you joined us with Judy. Uh, let's talk about the Rotary Foundation. This is a special year, 2017. The foundation is the heart and soul of Rotary International. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Well, the Rotary Foundation came about in 1917 when the sixth president of Rotary International, Arch Klump, uh, made a statement at the convention in Atlanta, Georgia, that we should create an endowment for doing good in the world. And the first contribution to that endowment was $26.50. And uh, today we have an endowment of over uh, $1 billion, uh, dollars, counting cash and expectancies, about $360 million is in cash, and the other 640 is in expectancies. And quite honestly, I hope we don't collect those expectancies anytime soon because those Rotarians not only are giving us their money, but they're giving us their talent and their time and their treasure. Uh, 
we give out about uh, 200 million dollars a year in grants uh, to do good work around the world. Uh, we raise about 150 million in our annual programs fund every year from Rotarians, not from other foundations, but strictly from Rotarians. And so I think it's moved very uh, far into the future. Uh, we just heard at lunch a peace scholar, a person that has uh, is she is devoting her life to helping create peace, goodwill, and understanding around the world and uh, working with refugees, working with people to get them settled in other countries, uh, helping them get citizenship. So, I mean, it's a fantastic thing that the foundation uh, is doing. So we're, we're in good shape. We're in good shape. We're going to be doing 100 million uh, year, 100 years of uh, celebration in Atlanta this year at our annual convention. So we're going back. Because it's 100 year, we're going back to where the foundation was really started. And uh, so we think it's going to be a great celebration. Uh, we got about 38,000 people that's going to be there, uh, which is one of the largest uh, that we've had, certainly within the United States and North America. Any uh, f final question, Mr. President? Uh, any advice that you could give to young people out there that are considering the opportunity to be a Rotarian? Well, I wish there was a lot more people considering the opportunity. I'm afraid that we as Rotarians have not asked enough people uh, to become Rotarians. Uh, the That's the key word, isn't the it? The key John? word is it's nine letters. It's simply nine letters. Ask, ask, ask. Uh, you can only become a Rotarian by being sponsored by another Rotarian. Uh, if you want to become a Rotarian, find a Rotarian, ask them to take you to a meeting, learn more about Rotary, and then you can be invited to become a Rotarian. It's the greatest experience in the world. It's the best service organization there is. And truly, Rotary is in the people business because that's what we want to do is make people's lives better. That's right. That's terrific. Uh, one final comment about your theme. Uh, for the uh. folks out there that are listening or watching on uh, community access television, each president selects a theme. Tell us about yours. Well, each uh, president does uh, when you're selected. And uh, if you're not challenged in October, then you have a meeting. And one of the questions they ask you is, what's your theme going to be? And it didn't take me long. Uh, Judy and I had talked about it, and I was brought up this way. It's service to Rotary Serving Humanity. Because what is it that we really do? Whether we're doing toilet blocks, whether we're doing vaccines, whether we're uh, dealing, uh, well, drilling wells, whether we're furnishing school books, medical equipment, we're all serving people. And people's humanity. So it just made it simple to say Rotary Serving Humanity. Rotary is lucky to have both of you. Well, and thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for being with us. It's my pleasure. Folks, let's put your hands together for the president of Rotary International and his wife, Judy. John Jerem, thank, thank you, you so Dave. much. Thank you, Ron. Keep up thank the good you. work. Thank you. Okay. And enjoy the balance of your year and how lucky we are to have you. Well, thank you very much. Good, good to be here. That's John Jerem, the president of Rotary International from Chattanooga, Tennessee. He says, I have an accent. Uh, it is a little different uh, from the Boston area. So uh, it's been fun to be able to chat with you, Judy, as well. And we wish you nothing but the best in your future travels. <laughs> yes, and they told us they're on their second book of passports with extra pages. They've been everywhere. If you we just joined us, folks, you're listening to AM 790 WPRV. This is a simulcast, and of course, uh, Brockton Community Access Television is covering this. We're uh, getting ready to speak to our next guest, and uh, she's a familiar face, a past district governor here in District 7950. Her name is uh, Terry Fitch. She happens to be the foundation chair here in District 7950. Where is 7950? It includes the entire state of Rhode Island, southeastern Massachusetts, Cape Cod, and the two islands, Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. And Terry is a past district governor as well. She certainly is, and a past president. And a past governor. She's done it all. Past everything. Past everything. Yes, all those letters, those alphabet soup letters we have in yes. Well, welcome anyway, Terry. Thank you. Interesting, Terry, as we chatted with uh, the president of Rotary International, we talked about the foundation. And I'm thinking of you, and I'm thinking of uh, all the good things you've done with our foundation. 
But I'm also thinking about uh, this sign, which we'll put on camera. It says, goodbye polio, thank you Rotary. And how important that is. As the president of Rotary International indicated, we're down to the single digits. We're down to two countries. And uh, we think it's going to happen. Terry, uh, tell us about some of your responsibilities as the foundation chair. Well, Dave, as you know, Rona, nice to see you too. Um, the role of the District Rotary Foundation Chair is to assist those Rotarians in the district who specifically work on that aspect of Rotary. Um, as a result, we actually touch and talk to, if you will, every club in the district, every Rotarian, because every Rotarian every year is it's hoped will donate something to the Rotary Foundation and in our district we do quite well and as a matter of fact um, President John talked about where we are in terms of annual giving at the Rotary Foundation he mentioned the annual programs fund 150 million dollars a year that's just the annual programs fund Rotarians in our district will also donate just to Polio Plus in addition to the annual programs fund, or they will donate to uh, specific district and global grant projects that the various clubs in our district are working on. Um, and as the Rotary Foundation chair, I get questions from clubs and individuals uh, asking for advice in terms of selecting a global grant project, administering a global grant project, selecting and administrating a district grant project. We have a truly, really dedicated group of Rotarians who work together with me on the different Rotary Foundation committees to assist individual Rotarians and clubs in our district to make and, all and these good things happen. And as you're listening, folks, uh, Terry Fitch, a past district governor, she has the foundation uh, committee for District 7950. In every district, and there are 534 around the world, they all have the opportunity to uh, push for the foundation, which is the heart and soul of Rotary International. Terry, uh, you've been a big plus for District 7950. Thank you, Dave. You served as a district governor, and I think everybody that followed you uh, looked for your guidance. And you're a dedicated person who's well, very much in the details. High. She set that mark very high. And I had to follow her as governor, so uh, doing a high jump uh, is really very difficult. And that's why you had me follow President John today? That's right. To I, pay me back? I thought you could handle <laughs> that very nicely. But uh, you certainly have been a very special Rotarian. And one of the uh, greatest decisions that Rotary made was to have women uh, be part of this organization and uh, you must have been thrilled when that happened Dave <laughs> let's see how I can uh, let's see how I can put this um, as far as I'm concerned we're all Rotarians we're not men Rotarians we're not women Rotarians we're Rotarians if we can just get past that someday we'll be there um, thank you <laughs> I got some applause for that <laughs> And it was a woman that applauded you. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Um, no, seriously, I, I actually wasn't in Rotary when that decision was first made. But it's kind of a no-brainer decision, isn't it? Because Rotary, just like all the other organizations around the world probably at that time, but certainly here in the U.S., were leaving 50% of the talent and the brain power that was available to them on the table. 50%. Well, actually, 51%, because women are 51% of the population and men are 49%. So that was really, that was really a, a no-brainer decision on Rotary's part. Great response. And it's been a great one because in every club, they always say the women are the hardest workers. Yeah, I don't know if that's true, Rona. I'd like to believe it sometimes. But on the other hand, I try to be fair. And what I go for is not the men and the women who are the hardest working. I do the usual, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. That's true in Rotary and every other That's organization right. around yeah. the world. Exactly whether whether right. male so, or female. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, you know, seriously, it, you know, it really was a no-brainer decision. You, you just can't, 
you can't meet the goals of the mission if you don't have all of the resources available to you. And to leave 51% of the resources behind is crazy. So, good for Rotary. Terry is uh, part of the Rotary Club of Newport, Rhode Island. And that's a very special place to be during the summer. I'm sure that your community probably picks up and uh, adds to their population. Quite a bit. A lot of guests, right? Yeah. A lot of yeah. visiting Rotarians. We have a population of about 25,000 year-round. And in the summertime, particularly uh, if there's a big event going on, like, for example, when Tall Ships was here a few years ago, I believe it mushroomed to 200,000. That's Whoa. a huge number. Yeah. On that little island, yeah. right? And it didn't Oh, well, it's not on that little <laughs> island. It's just on the southern end of that little mm -hmm. island. That's, That's where right. Newport is. Portsmouth is on the north end, and in the middle, is believe Middletown. it or not, is Middletown. Um, uh, and the whole island is Aquidneck Island. So the entire year-round population of Aquidneck Island, my understanding is between 60 and 65,000. So, and the island of Aquidneck, by the way, is about the same size as the island of Manhattan. So it swelled really? about three and yeah. a half oh, that's times. A surprise. Yeah, yeah. yeah Terry, we wanted to uh, ask you to give uh, our regards to Mike and to your mother. I know that uh, you have been uh, terrific in terms of uh, doing the best you can for your family. Thank you. At the same time, trying to do what you could to uh, help out Rotary. And we appreciate all your efforts. You're a very special person. God bless you. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that very much. And what number of conference is this for you? How many of these conventions um, have you been to? This is our first one. No, yeah, no. yeah, right. <laughs> I think it's number 21, but I'm not sure. I have to but go look it counting? up. Yeah, yeah. That's who's great. counting? That's so much fun. Thank you. Have a Thank great time the next couple of days. Thank you. You too. We're going to talk to uh, Dick Pratt, who's from uh, Martha's Vineyard. He has a special topic he'd like to talk about. And then we're going to talk to uh, uh, a couple that has served as uh, co-district governors. They're going to be coming on the air with us. We're going to speak with Carol Toomey, who is the Zone 32 Polio and Polio Now coordinator. But with us from Martha's Vineyard, that's God's country, is Dick Pratt. Dick uh, is a special Rotarian. Dick, how long have you been a Rotarian on the vineyard? A long time, but first, uh, hi Rona, and Hello. hi David. It's great Greetings. to be here in exciting Rotary times. It certainly is, and it looks like we're going to have about 500 at the dinner this evening. And uh, John Germ will be the keynote speaker. But uh, we're going to be taking a break in a couple of minutes, but we did want to uh, chat with you, Dick. I know that uh, you've been very active on another subject called Alzheimer's slash dementia. That's where it all started in District 7950. It started with the Rotary Club of Marcy's Vineyard. Let us uh, have your opinion about this uh, new cause. I know we talk an awful lot about polio, but tell us about uh, the Rotarian Action Group called Alzheimer's slash dementia. Well, it actually started as a result of a spilled drink and chasing ice cubes around on the floor and then meeting a man named Jeff Morby. And that led to Jeff coming to our club and speaking about the Cure Alzheimer's Fund and telling us Rotarians what he was doing. And uh, it spread like wildfire. And as you know, uh, we do local, national, and international projects so it really presented itself as uh, possibly the next thing. As polio goes off into the distance, the advent of new things coming in, uh, Alzheimer's and dementia might be a great candidate. Well, Alzheimer's certainly is a devastating disease of the brain. It attacks the brain cells, which has an effect on memory loss, on the judgments that we make, decisions that we make. As a matter of fact, I was telling Rohner, I think, that my wife thinks I have Alzheimer's because I'm always misplacing my keys. But I remind her it's not uh, losing your keys, it's Alzheimer's. It's when you find your keys and you don't know what they're for. And a lot of people, Dave, think that Alzheimer's and dementia are the same. They are not. Alzheimer's is one form of dementia. We're going to hear more about that in our 3 o'clock hour when we have Bob Elmer on who wrote the book Join the Journey. And Dick, uh, lots of Rotarians have been a big support of this cause. Uh, and of course, uh, Jeff Morby is a, an honorary member of your club on the vineyard. 
No, he's a real member. He's a real member. Yes, he is. That's terrific. I'd and like to uh, expand on this uh, new action group that we've got, David. Uh, the action group was established a few months ago, and uh, we've got a really exciting project going on run by a doctor from Duke University down in North Carolina. It's to determine why women are more predisposed to getting Alzheimer's than men. This is a new subject. It was funded by, for the first time in a, any time, to my knowledge, the foundation. Rotary Foundation and the Cure Alzheimer's Fund co-funded the project. As a matter of fact, the uh, Cure Alzheimer's Fund put up $250,000 with a match from Rotary International for 125000 with support from the Rotary Club of Martha's Vineyard and, of course, an international partner, the Rotary Club of Toronto, and some backup support from ADRAG, Alzheimer's slash Dementia Rotarian Action Group. Well, you know something, David, it's the beginning of something that's probably going to have a great ending because the staff and the people that are involved in it are a remarkable group of people. So thanks for being here. I appreciate and it. Thank you, Dick. Thank we you. look forward and, to the uh, session tomorrow. Shelby back at the station is telling us it's time for a break. But folks, stay with us. We're going to be on till 4 o'clock today. Hurry back, folks. We are this close. We are this close. Two today, more days. We are this close. This close to making history. This close. We're this close. We are this close. We are this close. This close. This close to changing the world. We are this close to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease ever again. We are this close to making history. We are this close to ending polio. This close to ending polio. We're this close. This close. This close to ending polio. This close. We are this close to ending polio. All we need is you. All we need is you. All we need is you. Is you. All we need is you. This close. If we don't act now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history. Welcome back uh, to Service Matters. Yes, we're live here on AM 790 WPRV. We're also uh, live on, uh, I should say, uh, tape delay on uh, community access television. We're at the multi-district conference, four districts here. We have Rotarians joining us today from Connecticut, Massachusetts, and of course, Rhode Island. We've been talking to a lot of Rotarians about the good things that they do. Their mission, folks out there, if you're listening, is to do good in the community and to reach beyond to do good in the world. We have uh, two folks here, they're a married couple, and they happen to be uh, co-district governors in their particular district. And it's uh, a different experience because usually out of 534 districts, they have one governor, but they have two governors, and we're interested in finding out how that's worked out during this Rotary year. Yeah, who does all the work? Pat so, and Skip Doyle. Oh, that, so we could answer that together. He does, <laughs> you know, but, uh, and he would You're point to me. You're the pretty one, right? You're the arm candy. Uh, well, our, no, that doesn't work that way. It, it's, uh, it's been an interesting experience for us, an interesting journey. We've worked together in business, so we figured we could do it, and we've been Rotarians together for many years, and we, we've chaired many district projects together so we, we had a feeling we could do it but until you're really doing it it's pretty difficult to know what it's going to be like and so when we look back on the experience what do you think well the right in you got to speak right they're sharing yeah. two mics one radio one TV without a doubt they, well, I uh, think that would work out because they're sharing the responsibility in their district right. so give them just one mic <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a case where the we traveled, obviously, together, as many couples do anyway, but we certainly went to every single club visit together, and that was definitely the highlight of our year so far, was visiting every single club, getting to meet 
people in the district of the 1,450 members of our district. Are you sick of chicken by now or sick of pasta? <laughs> well, you, you need to know that we're actually vegans. And ah. so it became very interesting for every club that we visited. They would have to make sure that they planned a special meal for us because we weren't able to eat the chicken. Um, we are actually we're actually vegan pescatarians, no. which means we eat fish. So um, you know, we were, we worked out well together. Tell me, Pat and Skip, uh, how does Rotary International handle this when they communicate? Do they communicate to both of you, or do they communicate one to one person? and then you folks work together. Well, that was that was kind of the deal. The deal was that the district was willing to accept the two of us as co-district governors, but Rotary International isn't quite there at this point yet where they would recognize both of us. So one of us had to do it, and I, I don't want to say that we taught, we did a toss of the coin, but somehow um, I was the one that ended up being the one. So the mail comes to me, the emails come to me, and I'm the one that has to sign off on anything. But when uh, you visit all of your clubs in your district, uh, who does the speaking or do you both speak? No, we definitely both speak. I don't let Pat get away with <laughs> saying all the words, you know. So I usually lead off with uh, a, a greeting and an introduction and so forth and, and warm them up and then Pat will step in and uh, and go on. So you're the opening act and mm -hmm. she's, she's the main act. And then I pass it over to him when we talk about visioning because club visioning was, was Skip's baby. It's the thing he brought into our district and so because of that he speaks about visioning and gives the whole visioning talk and then I finish it off uh, with the ending. I think this is a great system. I think more districts should do that. Well I think that uh, Rotary International is probably evaluating that scenario this year to see how it works out. I know that uh, it's important that people work together anyways. That's what we try to push the team concept. A very interesting thing that we've discovered as we've done this is, though, uh, we have a lot of uh, Rotary Clubs that are very traditional. And the very traditional Rotary Clubs look to the, the male. Um, that's because that's what they've always accepted. And so when we walk into a meeting, there are many times when Skip is always the one that's greeted, um, as if he's the the only district governor and then we have to set them straight that we are doing this together it's both of us um, there are other clubs that are more uh, modern let's say and, and there are more women in those clubs necessarily and they'll gravitate uh, more toward, toward me and, and the greeting. Tell us so. something about your district I know you're from district 7910 uh, what does that encompass in terms of territory? Well, basically it's Worcester County so from the, the northernmost point of Massachusetts on the border of Connecticut down to Rhode Island and, uh, and Worcester County from the, the west and east, almost into Boston, but not including Boston. And we, we've, we've, we've got some terrific Rotarians in your district as well. I see uh, Carol Toomey's here. Uh, Mr. Fusco, uh, you have lots of Rotarians who have uh, dug in deep to do the best they could. And you need to know that uh, Dr. Satya Mitra uh, is from our district. I was going to say, I he saw has him just, come up the escalator a little while ago. He Mr. has membership. just within, well, and also Mr. Fundraiser, because within a little more than six months, he has raised $1.2 million dollars for the foundation for He's our an district, guy. We and we're we're going to want, we're going to go to 1.5 by May 25th. That's we our goal. We haven't had him on the year yet because he's so busy recruiting new members and probably <laughs> fundraising and raising money. <laughs> but he's a terrific Rotarian. He sure is. We'd like to congratulate both of you for your hard work and uh, being an off officers of uh, Rotary International, serving your district. Uh, keep up the good work, and it'll be interesting to see at the end of the year whether or not. Other folks uh, step up and do the same thing, working together with that team concept. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Skip you and Pat Doyle. Us. Thank you for very having much. us. We're going to speak uh, shortly with Carol Toomey. She's the Zone 32 uh, uh, Polio in Polio Now coordinator. We're also going to have a chance to speak to the group study exchange team and District uh, 7950. We got Bob Elmer coming up in our 3 to 4 o'clock hour with his book, Join the Journey. And Bob Elmer will have a red hat on, he'll have a bow tie on, and we're going to talk about his book uh, when we sit down and chat with him. It's called Join the Journey. And speaking of journeys, well, we, have, we, 
Carol Toomey is joining us right now. Right, but we're going to have to wait because we're going to be coming up to news in a minute or two. So I think we should we should talk about where we are and what's going on, Dave. Uh, well, right now I know that uh, uh, Randy Scott is uh, giving us a signal here to uh, keep talking. And I've keep never talking until we hear the music from Shelby. And I've never had a problem. Most of the time people are telling me to stop talking, but... Uh, Carol Toomey, thank you so much for joining us here on AM790 WPRV and, of course, uh, Brockton Community Access Television. You have to smile on camera now because uh, this is not just radio but TV. And you need to get closer to those two mics. We'll probably just about be able to greet you and say who you are and where you're from before we go to news at 3. Carol, you are from what district? I'm from District 7910, and I'm in the I'm in the Neshoba Valley Rotary Club, the newest club in the district. Very and, good. How and, many people? Uh, we're up to 33. And, and in, you've got a major role now as the uh, coordinator of N Polio now. Um, tell us about it, our listening audience. Certainly, I know about it, but what about our listening no, audience? No, I think you're going to have to wait because the music's playing in our ears, which means we've got okay, just a Carol, if you'll few hold seconds on. till news. We'll be back, folks. Uh, we'll talk to more Rotarians here at their multi-district conference. Hurry back. We are this close. Inter de Gerlo. This close. This close. This close to making history. This close. This close. This close to changing the world. We are this close, this close to making sure no child suffers from this crippling disease ever again, ever again. This close to changing the world. We are this close to ending polio. All we need is you. Is you. Is you. Is you. We are this close to ending polio. All we need is you. Welcome back, folks, to our simulcast. We're here at the Rhode Island Convention Center, the site for the uh, 2017 Multi-District Rotary Conference. Lots of people here. There'll be 500 uh, people here this evening at dinner. The keynote speaker will be the president of Rotary International, Mr. John Germ. A special thank you. We're live here on AM 790 WPIV. We're on tape delay on Brockton Community Access Television. So we'll all smile, folks, because we are on camera. But uh, I guess right now... Before you get to poor Carol, who's been waiting, we keep introducing her and stopping her, I think we should thank Len Sormonti from Payden Associates. They are advertising specialty people. They provide us with pens for all our guests that say service matters. So thank you very much, Len Sormonti. We appreciate it, Len, and of course, uh, our major sponsor, Navigant Credit Union, they have a motto at the Credit Union, that motto is people helping people, and how nicely it fits in with Rotary. You notice our everybody motto, here's got a bag from Navigant, too, they've provided. Service uh, above self is really our motto, and of course, uh, let's get back to Carol Toomey. This, uh, we have a cable cast going on as well. It's on tape delay. We thank Mark Lindy and his crew for uh, covering this particular event and for covering uh, our radio show called Service Matters. We've Carol Toomey, your title is uh, Zone 32 and Polio Now Coordinator. Tell us about your responsibility. Well, my responsibility is to help those district uh, polio chairs help their club chairs because really and truly it's all about ending polio. You know, 20 years ago, a thousand children every day came down with polio. And one out of every 200 had the paralyzing kind. To this day, there is no cure for polio. We can only prevent it. 
So a lot of people don't inoculate their children with uh, uh, polio vaccine or any of the other vaccines. While it's still in the world, it's only a plane ride away from coming back. So we're that's, trying that's to- That's why we have to get to the finish line. And you we, know, that is scary, Carol, when you say a plane ride away. Somebody gets on a plane, they fly into New York or Boston, and there it can be, or it's, Chicago. Where, it's wherever. very scary, but there's good news on the horizon. We've only had five cases since the beginning of the year, and we're in high hopes that this, the 100th year of foundation, will be the last year of polio. So that's our great hope. So folks, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know we're gonna get to the finish line. A big thank you to all the Rotarians around the world and to all the partnerships that Rotary has. Zone 32 uh, consists of 20 districts. Yes. And we're probably talking about 40,000 Rotarians. And today we have four districts together here at the Rhode Island Convention Center. And uh, we uh, saw all the materials that you're passing out. Goodbye, Polio. Thank you, Rotary. And uh, any final comments, Carol, you'd like to make? No, I just, uh, one good thing about this ending polio is we've been able to learn a lot so that we can end other diseases as well. So it's not just polio that we are working on. The system of tr uh, inoculating children, the infrastructure has helped in other diseases as well. So we're very excited about that. Thank you very much, uh, Carol Toomey. Now let's give this gift to the children of the world. Let's end polio as soon as we can. Keep up the good work, Carol. And enjoy the conference. Thank you very much. We're going to be chatting with Bob Elmer. He lives in Connecticut. He's a past president twice, the Rotary Club of three times. Westerly, Rhode Island. Uh, actually, I guess it's three times. Three Westerly, one Mystic, Connecticut. Who right, knows? Bob? It could be four times by the time he gets over here to the chair. But the fact is, he has arrived. He's a special guy. He wrote a book called Join the Journey. It's care for the Alzheimer's uh, caregivers. He's known as Robert Elma III. He's the guy here at the conference. I can pick him out because he has the bow tie. Bob Elma, thank you for joining us. Uh, he's also a radio voice. He's a writer. He does it all. And he also marries people. He does, absolutely. Welcome. Welcome. Great to be with you again. Thank you, David, and thank you, Rona. Bob, uh, we certainly appreciate all the good work that you do, but tell us about the uh, book that you wrote. Well, Dave, you, there are so many caregivers uh, in need out there of information. Um, I heard you talking earlier about the impact on women. There are over 15 million informal um, at-home caregivers. Two-thirds of them are, in fact, women. One-third of them are daughters. Um, and women are really at the epicenter of this illness as, as caregivers and as sufferers. And, and uh, I learned a long time ago in my capacity as a senior care administrator that there's, uh, there's a world of people out there in this universe as caregivers who have no idea what they're dealing with, how to, how to manage these behaviors, how to understand the behaviors that, that they're having to deal with and the challenges every day. Um, it, uh, the mortality rate of an at-home caregiver is 63% greater than it is for a non-caregiver of the same age. You know, Bob, you've been with us a couple of times, yes. and I've heard you tell this story a number of times. Oh, it's worth and I, I think it's important to say it again. There are people who say, I am not putting my husband, I am not putting my wife in a nursing home. They want to stay here. I'm keeping them here. And it isn't a good idea, is it? No, and, and my thinking behind that is it's not self-serving at all. Um, there's nothing worse that you can do. There's nothing more unfair to your loved one than for them to be at home requiring a level of care you can no longer accommodate. And you have to remember, again, the toll that this is taking on caregivers. You know, of the 15 million informal caregivers, 30% of them are going to pre deceased the people they're caring for. And, and then uh, where does that leave them? Exactly. And you have no idea how many husbands are are really masking the deficits of their wives or the wives are caring for their afflicted husbands and you know they're hiding his deficits as well and it takes an alarming toll on on those caregivers and so back to your original question the book is designed it's written for those informal caregivers as well as formal caregivers 
in terms of understanding those behaviors, uh, the things that everybody, and I mean everybody, uh, even if you have a next door neighbor or somebody in your Rotary Club that's got a wife or a husband that's dealing with this, needs to understand. Um, every opportunity, I lecture at the University of Rhode Island College of Nursing, and I know that this is not news to you, but there's three things that everybody should understand about this illness. The first thing is, the number one thing they're looking to you for is to feel safe, because they cannot reason and rationalize away fear and anxiety like you and I can. The second thing is, you can't reason with somebody who has literally lost the ability to reason. Their world makes perfect sense to them as they see it. And the third thing is, it's the illness. Uh, when mom is using words and language that, well, frankly, you never knew she knew, and worse than that, she's using them appropriately in a sentence, or dad gets up in a room full of people and starts to take his clothes off, he may simply be overheated, um, or he uh, may have to go to the bathroom. But so this is his brain's way of saying how to work with it. So you so need to understand those things. Understanding is so important uh, with this cause. I know I've heard lots of numbers uh, flashed around, Bob. Uh, numbers like 45 million people around the world living with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. I've also heard that we have 5.6 million in the United States. Right. And out of that, uh, 5.2 or 4 million people uh, senior adults ages 65 and over. Right. Well, I'm, you know, backing up to women, when, a, when women hit their 60s, they're twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's than they are breast cancer. Uh, they have that a one, is a staggering yeah, Exactly. Fact. And they have a 1 in 6 chance of contracting Alzheimer's, whereas men have a 1 in 11 chance. I mean, the numbers, again, are, are staggering. Um, and, and again, as uh, the toll that, again, it's taking on those caregivers. So it, you know, it's one of the things, the whole idea here is to educate these people and, uh, and deal with some of the many challenges along with the day-to-day, -day, you know, what does this behavior mean, interpreting it and so on. There is no preventive care for it, is there? Not yet, no. Uh, no, and it's interesting, people ask me about cure and prevention and, and I have to be very honest with you, I'm confident we will find a way to prevent this disease. I'm not confident they'll ever find a way to cure the disease. I'm a big fan of, you know, I read everything I can read. I watch the PBS documentaries and all the other things on this illness and what's going on in Colombia with that genetic mutation on chromosome number 10 and that entire family that's been, that's been struck by it and the toll that it's taking on them. Um, but nowhere in those discussions do you ever hear the word cure come up. Yeah. And I think that's pretty telling. One, Tell of, us one of the things I would like to uh, mention, if I may, Rona, uh, Join the Journey is the name of the book. How can people get a copy of this book? We're going to try to put this on camera. Uh, you can go through my website, which is careforcaregivers.org, but it's probably easiest for anyone and everyone to go to Barnes & Noble and get it directly from them. You can go to Barnes & Noble or Amazon, one of those two. Um, I, frankly, Barnes & Noble uh, is between you and I a little easier to work with. Uh, but that, I would, you can get it there. And uh, and you're also in the Westerly and Mystic area and the bookstores there. Right. I live in Stonington, and um, I have a book signing coming up in the first week of June in Mystic at the Bank Square Books, the Savoy Bookstore. You and, have been a terrific uh, ambassador for this cause. Well, it's, uh, with it's, it's, it's it, ongoing, it, isn't it? It's, it's critical information, and it's very flattering for me when, I, when I'm out in public and somebody has read my, one of my articles. I'm in six newspapers. I'm on two radio stations. And uh, with this kind of information, I do the memory care minutes on two different radio stations. And now and you're on a simulcast. Yes, 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 and um, well, I mean, this will advance his career. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure it will. <laughs> uh, but know that along with the book, there's other great resources out there. There's the Alzheimer's Association, and you know, there's some wonderful works going on. The Cure Alzheimer's Fund, uh, CART. Uh, thanks to you, David, I've been able to do some work on their behalf. They're doing some marvelous things, and Bill Salito, uh, yeah. And uh, really, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be a part of, for sure. Well, we got a lot of things going on. we got a show coming up next week that you're going to join me Looking on. Looking forward to that. A big thank you to uh, Bob. Uh, we certainly uh, appreciate uh, all the good work that you have done. Next, we're going to be talking with uh, the Group Study Exchange team from Australia. Uh, we got uh, a two-hour show. We have uh, probably 20 or 30 guests that are joining us today. A big thank you to Shelby back at the studio, and of course, uh, 
Randy Scott, who's here uh, by our side giving us guidance. We'll be right back after this message. Thank you, David. We are this close. Inter de Gerlo. This close. This close. This close to making history. This close. This close. This close to changing the world. We are this close, this close to making sure no child suffers from this crippling disease ever again, ever again. This close to changing the world. We are this close to ending polio. All we need is you. Is you. Is you. Is you. We are this close to ending polio. All we need is you. And right now, we're going to talk with the uh, GSE team. It stands, folks, for Group Study Exchange. They're from Australia. I'm going to chat with uh, the folks who is, ho that, uh, is coordinating the hosting of this team. <laughs> I'm a former GSE team leader that went to India. Of course you are. And uh, I know what it means uh, to participate in this program. It's a terrific experience. Although Australia is a little different than India, a lot different. Uh, I would like to ask Karen Smith, uh, who's a very gracious host. Karen, uh, how long is the team here? And I'm going to give you the honor and privilege of introducing them. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Ronan. Um, they got here after a 36 hour flight. They were delayed by four hours. So they were troopers because they got up the next morning and they were out the door by 9 o'clock. Did they know what country they were in, though? <laughs> <laughs> And then they had an hour's ride to get to their host oh, families. Gosh. But they're here for a month, and each week they're in a different section of our district. So the first week they were on the South Shore. The second week they were in New Bedford, Fall River, Providence, Rhode Island. Week three, they're further into Rhode Island, Newport, Smithfield, and all the way down there. And week four, they end up on Cape Cod. So hopefully by then they'll have some nice weather, because they've had a lot of rain. Yeah, you're going to love Cape Cod. It's a very handsome uh, group as well. And I know that... Uh, you folks can smile because you're on community television as well as radio. This is a simulcast. Karen, I know you're a gracious host because you two have been a team member. You went to Brazil. And you and I can both uh, relate to this because it's a tremendous experience to be able to go to another country to learn their way of life, to learn their customs. Introduce our team leader. I'd like to hear about uh, how she helped put this team together, and how are things going so far? Here's Tracy. Thanks, Dave. Um, our team has been selected based on the occupations of peace and conflict resolution. So wow. we got a grant from the Rotary Foundation to come visit you all. And linking to the pillars of the Rotary Foundation, we chose to restrict the entry to peace and conflict resolution. So we have a really broad mix of people, some of whom are with me today, um, and uh, we'll be doing a presentation at conference here on Sunday morning and after maybe, breakfast. Tracy, maybe you can pass the mic and let everyone say where they're from. Sure. Because I know you're not all from Australia. I just Correct. got an education about the Solomon Islands. Correct, Rona. And um, I'd our, like to know their profession as well. Yeah, sure. Our district is one of the few districts in the world that is multinational and we cover the small corner of southeast Queensland, which is a state in Australia, Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands and Nauru. So I'm from Brisbane, which is the capital of Queensland, and I'm a health and safety professional. And I'll hand over to Richard. Hello, yes, I'm Richard. Richard. Nice to meet you all. Uh, I also come from Brisbane, the capital of Queensland, and I'm a mediator, but I specialise in restorative justice. So that's bringing together victims and offenders after a crime to meet and talk things through. Very, Very good. good, Richard. Now we go to Emily. Hi, I'm Emily. Nice to meet you both. Um, my role is in refugee advocacy, so I've done various things, including child protection, case management, and refugee settlement. Um, I currently work for an NGO from Australia in Papua New Guinea where I advise the Department of Immigration of Papua New Guinea on refugee settlement. 
And you are from where? And I'm originally from uh, New South Wales, like we just discussed, in the south of Australia, but I uh, live in Brisbane occasionally as well. Okay, and now here comes Roberta. This is the one where I've got an education. <laughs> Hello, my name is Roberta Ramafila. I'm from Solomon Islands. I work as a counsellor back at home, uh, assisting women and children who are victims of domestic violence. And tell everyone, as you were telling me, where the Solomon Islands are. Solomon Islands is in the Pacific Ocean. It's northeastern side of Australia, on top of Australia. It's not part of Australia. It's a totally different country on its own. So when your district governor goes around the district, they take a boat, right? They take yes. a ship or a plane. Or a plane. Yes. yes. Very, very good. No. So you've, There's you've been... also a fifth member of the team. There's also a fifth member to the team. She's not here. You've been here a couple of weeks. I'm interested to know what your impressions are. Good and bad. You can tell us whatever you want to tell us. Uh, the fifth member of our team is a Australian Federal Police Officer and unfortunately she can't do the television so she's standing in the backgrounds pulling faces at us. Oh, okay. But, um, <laughs> ah, there she is, okay. But uh, our impressions, oh, my impressions, um, this is not the first time I've been in the States so um, I have never been to the New England space before and i Well, this is God's country. It is, it's beautiful. <laughs> and now that the sun is shining, it's even yes. better. Um, my impression... It's not all that dissimilar to home. It's really different architecture. People are pretty similar. Uh, regional places look similar. Uh, architecture's different. Um, you got better wine, though. Well, I've, you had, New I've, Zealand. Had, I've had some really good <laughs> Californian wine while I've been here, but I haven't got terribly much from up this way. Um, but it's been an awesome experience, absolutely fantastic. And the generosity and openness of the Rotarians we've been involved with have been amazing. Now, are you staying with different hosting families, I assume? Uh, maybe you could mention, uh, Richard, uh, you've got the mic now. Uh, who are you staying with while you're here? Uh, so, uh, loosely, we've been staying with a different family for each week. So we've just sort of left our second family. Uh, in the first week, I stayed with uh, Kelly and Rochelle Moore in Braintree from the Braintree Club. And in the week just gone, Roberta, Danique and I were staying with one family, one very, very generous family, um, Isabel and Joe Delgado, who have, have just been so generous. I know them, right. And, and taking on three, I, I understand that's quite unusual for a GSE. Uh, so they're special people. <laughs> and how about your vocational visitations? Who would like to answer that question? Sure. Thank this you. This is Emily again. I'm Emily. Um, I had the pleasure of visiting two organisations uh, in Boston. The first one was KIND, which is Kids in Need of Defence. So this is a group of pro bono uh, lawyers that work with children, unaccompanied children who cross the border who need defence from deportation. Uh, the second one was MIRA, which is Massachusetts uh, Immigrant and Refugee Advocacy, which is a great group that does um, work in the community advocating for refugee needs. Do you miss your family at home? Obviously yeah. you do. Kind of, but it's a whole lot of program and we're busy every day doing things. So we miss our families back at home, even though they're far away. But it's also interesting we're learning so much about American the American culture and the people here are so have been so nice giving us a home away from home so what do you think well, of New England seafood have you sampled it do you like it I love fish oh, and chips oh, Richard's <laughs> reaching for the mic <laughs> Roberta said she loves fish and chips if you didn't get yeah, Roberta's that. had plenty of fish and chips I'm <laughs> on a mission to try every bit of seafood here in New England <laughs> You'll find it. There's no shortage the of it. The scallops are great, but I'm a big fan of the clams. It's not something we do a lot of in Australia. Have you had a lobster yet? I have yeah. had a lobster. <laughs> what about stuffies? Stuffed clams? Oh, you have to try stuffies. Stuffed clams? You've been keeping that from me, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stuffies We're going to talk later. <laughs> you know, <Tomorrow. laughs> when I asked that question earlier, do you miss your family? Obviously you do. But as a former team leader to India, you pick up a new family. You don't lose the family you have. And although I was excited to be there, uh, I was kind of disappointed when the plane took off and I left India because I was afraid that I would never see these folks again. But they keep calling. At 2 o'clock in the morning when I'm sleeping, <laughs> I get a call from India, and I know it's them. But I pay them back. I call them the next day when they're sleeping. But anyways, uh, it's been a wonderful experience. 
You all got smiles on your faces. Karen, uh, some final comments about this team that's visiting. I think we learned that we're more alike than different, and I think that's the whole essence of the Group Study Exchange program. You learn about the other culture, but bottom line, I think it was best said by a third grader at the Wollaston School when we had the Russian team in. He asked one of the team members, what do your kids in Russia do? And he said, oh, my son plays PlayStation. And the little boy's eyes lit up and he goes, that's what I do too. <laughs> and he goes, wow, we're more alike than we are different. And I yes. think that's the essence of our program. Rotary does that. They help to shrink the world. Yes. They really do every day. Before we bring uh, Bill Vangel on the air with us, with, this, uh, with Tina, I would like to ask, uh, starting with the team leader, a final comment about your visit here, District 7950. Okay. Oh, wow. How, how to reduce that down to a small comment? Um, I'm just so very grateful for the generosity of all the Rotarians um, that we've been exposed to thus far and that we're still to be exposed to. Um, for me, it's about making links with clubs to be able to do joint collaborative global grant projects down the track. Um, so I look forward to further discussions with many more people about that. Wonderful. Richard? Um, I've already spoken about New England seafood. <laughs> so I'd like to take the opportunity, having just come from Fall River and, and New Bedford, uh, to mention Portuguese food, uh, oh, yeah. which <laughs> I've, I've established a, a new appreciation for. But, but of course, meeting, as Tracy said, meeting all these people. You just um, came here to eat, though, I think. <laughs> Look, and if, if you'd followed us, you, 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 you'd say that was definitely true. <laughs> There's lots of diversity here. Thank you. Um, I'd like to second Tracy's comments with the appreciation of um, the generosity that's been shown by our hosts and uh, other Rotarians in general. Um, if you would like to follow our journey, there is a Facebook page. So if you punch into your Facebook uh, 9600 GSE 2017, you can uh, follow our journey and see all the wonderful activities. Why don't that you we say that to. again? Absolutely. So into your Facebook browser, you type 9600 GSE 2017. Wonderful. Final comment, Roberta. Well, I just want to, I just want to say thank you to all the Rotarians who we. The four of us are not non-Rotarians, so we, we just want to say thank you. It's been so wonderful, and we're looking forward to the next two weeks with the lovely hosts and the lovely families who've made us feel welcomed, and we're enjoying the trip here. Thank you. Thank you. And, of course, when I think of your team, I think of uh, the importance of Rotary's mission, and that mission is to do good in the community and to reach beyond to do good in the world, just like the GSE team is doing. Enjoy your experience. And we'll see you at the water fire tonight. And now go make, Thank you know, you, go Karen make faces Smith. at your other They're members. They're going to be lighting the fire tonight. Oh, are you? That's You're going to be lighting the fire? Yep. Oh, what an experience. It's a fantastic thing. You'll remember that. Enjoy the experience. Thank Next, you. we're going to be speaking to uh, Bill Vangel. This is a simulcast. I'm Dave Clifton. I'm Rona along Mann. with uh, Rona Mann. And uh, right now, uh, welcome uh, Bill Vangel, Tina. Uh, it's always nice to have Tina here, especially when it's TV. Yes. We want to get yes. her on camera. <laughs> yes, Bill Vangel has really orchestrated this entire conference and done a great job. This has been a lot of fun, a lot of hard work, and um, I'm happy to say that I was able to survive the five, the five governors, so we... Uh, it's come together. It's been a project, but it's been a lot of fun. Is that so. the four district governors and Gina? No. Well, the, we have. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, because we have the co-governors in seventy-nine, ten. We've ah, got five the governors. Five. So. Okay. And as a matter of fact, we have the first gentleman who will be joining us uh, tomorrow. But Bill, uh, what's going to happen tonight? Uh, this evening, uh, we've got the um, the banquet here in the ballroom at the convention center. We have. Um, We'll be having the parade of governors, just the five, uh, come in, and uh, we've got a wonderful dinner celebration. President John Germ, President of Rotary International from Chattanooga, Tennessee, is going to be our keynote speaker. We have four district awards that we're going to be uh, giving out 
uh, four major awards. And then after that, we'll be going across the street over to the basin uh, for water fires. And we also will have a special welcome from the mayor of Providence. Uh, Jorge uh, Eloza will be here, and uh, he'll kind of uh, welcome uh, not only four districts, but uh, all the Rotarians from Connecticut, Massachusetts, and of course, Rhode Island. What are the plans for tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow morning, we um, have a great uh, uh, keynote speaker, Michelangelo Caruso, who is a district governor from um, Michigan. We're um, going to have um, the first husband, uh, Governor Gina Raimondo's uh, husband, Andy Moffitt, will be here for a greeting in the morning. The first gentleman. The first gentleman. Thank you. <laughs> I because like it, the first the, uh, husband. Because it sounds like she's going to have another husband. That's true. <laughs> um, the, uh, Andy is a uh, past Rotary and International um, ambassadorial scholar. In fact, the um, Governor Raimondo and um, Andy met while they were both studying at, at Oxford when uh, Andy was an uh, ambassadorial scholar. So his Rotary bringing the couple together. Yes. And who's that lovely uh, young lady that you're joining you this evening? Uh, <laughs> Tina, welcome. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. You've got to get that mic right close to you. It's a pleasure. I've already had a ball. I got to be part this morning of the water fire setup. So we get to go on the boats and we got to load the wood into the police The braziers. The braziers. And we just found out that the GSE team will be lighting the braziers yes. tonight. Yes. What an honor that is. Yep. They don't it's realize what they're in for. It's great. It's a lot of fun. And I know you folks have worked very hard for Rotary over the years. Uh, Tina, I know you're a past president. Yes. Uh, so he the was Rotary the Club first. of Situate, Rhode Island. That's right. And Bill, you're doing it again after serving as a governor. That's right. I'll be uh, president of our um, our club uh, uh, once again next year. So I'm looking forward to that. And I've always said that club president's the best job in Rotary, and I really believe it. It is. It so. really is. But while I was president, he was the first husband of the club. <laughs> That's right. There so you he's, go. He's worn both hats. Yep. So you were the first gentleman. Absolutely. Yeah, I was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you told us about tonight. You told us about tomorrow morning. What about tomorrow night and Sunday morning? Uh, tomorrow night we have uh, a great dinner here in the ballroom again at the convention center. We have the um, an outstanding young Rotarian from Chattanooga, Tennessee, Lauren Templeton, who is an investment counselor. She is also on the Rotary International Investment Committee. She will uh, be with us tomorrow. And we will have um, Sunday... We have the youth exchange students from all four of the districts with us, and we'll have the GSE team, the group study exchange from Australia, doing a, uh, a presentation during breakfast on Sunday. And then Sunday afternoon, everybody goes to your house for a cocktail party. <laughs> that, <right>? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, we'd like to hosting. thank uh, both you and Tina for joining us. Uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. It's been. Uh, a very special conference and we're just kicking it off and just getting started but we've had uh, maybe 25 different guests joining us yes. that's a special great. pen for both of you oh, wow. for joining us thank you in case you have to write thank any you. checks out <laughs> and again uh, we wish you the best and i look forward to seeing you at the dinner this evening right. hey enjoy very the good. fruits of your labors you've worked very hard for it to have fun well, well thank you rona but you always do yes Take Thank care. you very much. We have another guest that's going to come over and join us. Uh, we're going to ask him to uh, introduce himself. We got three minutes to break, but we can at least get started. And we got a gentleman here from the outreach program, Ending Hunger and Enriching Lives. He wants to fight hunger. Tell us who you are and uh, what your project's all about. Yep, uh, my name is Matthew Martin. I'm the regional manager for this area, and Joe Clancy asked me to come and speak because uh, my boss, Floyd Hammer, is a Rotarian. He retired 13 years ago, and uh, he has fed 373 million people wow. during that time. He actually just repurposed because he had lived service above self for an entire business career and needed to keep doing that. Um, so that's the project we're involved with. Joe's was the first district of the 31 in the Northeast to get involved, and we've worked with 15 different districts now uh, packaging meals. I was noticing your flyer, benefits to your group, uh, building community, creating goodwill. 
lots of volunteer opportunities. So what can uh, people do? Who do they contact? If they'd like to help out. Yep, and I'm sure it's them. not just Rotarians. You'll work with anyone, No, correct? we've actually worked with 78 different kind of groups, but Rotarians, Lutherans, and the United Way have been the three most involved groups. And I used to be a Lutheran pastor. My boss is a Rotarian. And then the United Way caught wind of what we were doing and wanted to get involved. So we do a lot of uh, meal packaging events. In the last eight weeks, we've actually fed a million people, but 568,000 of those meals were packaged by Rotarians. That's so terrific. Just hugely involved. But they can contact me and then uh, get involved. All four of the districts that are here have been involved. How do they contact you? Yep, um, they can either uh, just talk to Joe Clancy if they know him, or they can just go to our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash endhungerne. Uh, we're trying to end hunger in the Northeast. You might repeat that once again. Yep, facebook.com slash endhunger, two words, E-N-D-H-U-N-G-E-R. And then the initials NE, which stands for either New England or Northeast. But we've been able to feed about 19 million people since we started five or six years ago. Thank you very much. Uh, We're just about ready to take a break. You've been listening to AM 790 WPRV. This is a simulcast with uh, Brockton Community Access Television. Ron and I will be back after these important messages. Fiji is one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's a place where there's serenity and beauty, a wonderful lifestyle, and fantastic people. Yes, it's part of the third world, but it's developing and growing up quite quickly. If these students are to compete in the world today, they must be computer literate. We could bring this tablet technology. We could bring these small things that within them hold a world of information. And they can take these young people to places far beyond the classroom. They can help them interact with, you know, skeletons, with the body, with cells, with science, with mathematics, and filming their own culture. The vision that we will be the first school that is going to have one tablet per time. And I believe with the assistance of Rotary International, we will get there. Yes, and we're back, folks, for our simulcast. Uh, Our next guest is Mark Lindy. Mark is the general manager of the Brockton Community Access Television. Mark, we thank you so much for uh, covering our radio show today with your staff. And uh, it'll be nice to be able to see it uh, uh, and to hear it as well as see it. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. We're glad to do it. Uh, Dave, you volunteered for me for years and years on cable, announcing all the different Sharon, Foxborough, and Brockton games. So uh, how could I say no? Well, I, appreciate I could it. give you 15 reasons. Okay. <laughs> Having known him. Well, we don't have enough time for 15. <laughs> but I would like to, uh, again, thank you for covering it because I, I think the president of Rotary International will enjoy seeing this. It'll bring back some memories about what's going on here in the New England area. As you know, he travels around the world. Well, it was an honor to be here for him, and I want to thank my colleague, Matt Nelson, for being part of this as well. Um, We're going to get this around to the local cable channels, uh, Brockton Community Access, Sharon, Easton, wherever it can go, because you do a great job with this show. We're looking forward to see how you splice all this together, because uh, we've had all kinds of folks. I see uh, Past District Governor Barry Clayman here in the audience. We're going to switch mics. Come on over and say hello, Barry. Thank Thank you, you, Mark. Mark Lindy. Make us look good when you splice. Brockton Community Access Television. And uh, we'll just interview one more person before What a Wonderful World uh, gives us a hint that we're going off the year. Thank you for joining us. You're here from Old Cape Cod. Yes, Old Cape Cod. And I know you've got a session going on tomorrow for the Rotary Community Corps. Tell us about it. Actually, it's Sunday, and um, we're, having a, we're having a walk on Sunday, the 30th, in Brockton. And uh, all of the funds raised will be used to 
pay for the scholarships that we provide to uh, families who have a member of the family who has dementia or Alzheimer's so that they can attend adult day health care. And they, they're provided the care currently at the uh, New England Sinai Hospital in Stoughton. You've been so dedicated to that cause, uh, not just uh, providing services, but raising the funds to make it work. And adult daycare does so much for people with Alzheimer's. Well, it's the benefit is for the actual client who has Alzheimer's, but it's also important for the uh, family. Sure. Because then they get respite care. Absolutely. And they're able to do their thing, work, shop, whatever, knowing that their family member is being taken care of at the uh, Delta Healthcare Program. So uh, uh, we've been doing this since 2001. I look forward to doing the, uh, splitting the session with you tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. And, oh, uh, I'm sorry, that's what you were referring to. I was to. referring to that, but oh. uh, it was nice to hear about the other thing. Joining you is uh, the district governor of our district. Does we he, does want he want him to say hello? Do you want to sit on my lap? He's, he's <laughs> going to be you? the final speaker. Very, very Russell, you're going to have to get these mics, both mics, right to you. And okay. again, this has been a simulcast, and it's been absolutely terrific. How are you, you can't Dave? Believe the number of guests. Rona, that nice to see you. Good. You got to put both mics okay. at his mouth because one's radio, one's TV. It's been absolutely wonderful from the president all the way through uh, Rotarians. Thank you. And uh, it's a terrific organization. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. What a conference we're having, huh? What a conference. And it's only just begun. We just started. We're into a couple hours. It's going to be great. And are you going to be in the boat tonight at the water fires? Well, we're going to be at the water fire. I don't know about in the boat. <laughs> and I don't know about being on fire, but we'll be, we're going to be there. Well, How about Past District Governor Barry here? I tell you, he uh, has been a great guy. Oh, he's this, unbelievable. This, this is my pin. Create, a, create awareness and take action. There you go. That's it. Barry, you got to speak into that Seven, 17 years ago, I was yep. going I haven't aged a day. So I'll tell you, we got a past district governor with us, Rona. We got a current governor who's got the whole district fired up. Uh, thank you. And uh, this has been a tremendous uh, conference so far, and we're just in the early stages. So I remember Barry coming to my club 17 years ago, and I remember getting a, a district newsletter from Barry. So I still have some of those in my rotary collection of stuff. And uh, oh, that I was threw that away. Years you ago. threw all that away, but I kept <laughs> I kept it, and uh, that's what inspired me to do my district governor newsletter and I've got nothing but positive feedback from it. Everybody seems to like it, I hope. But anyway, so that was from Barry. So Well, thank you for the compliment. I, I appreciate it. Um, most of my newsletters and whatever are, are under a leg of a chair that isn't balanced. <laughs> <laughs> they, were t they were tan. Yours were all a tan cover. But Go yeah. Governor you were, Russell. You were pretty good at balancing the district anyways. I'd well, like to take this opportunity to uh, Thank you both. Uh, District Governor Russell Bertrand, uh, wish you the best throughout the conference. Thank you. This has been terrific for not only the radio station AM790, but for Brockton Community Access to cover this as a simulcast. Uh, we'll make sure that uh, you get a copy of this. That'd be great, Dave. And we'll Thank make you. sure that the president gets a copy of pen in case you want to write out a check. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got over 500 people at this multi-district Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. All ready to have a great We're time, have a great learn time something. Tonight. We've got Rotary International President John Germ here, which is incredible. And uh, that was hatched three years ago when I was a district governor nominee. We wanted to have John Germ, Rotary International President, at our conference. They told us we couldn't do it. And he's here today. I'm really proud of that, and that's a great accomplishment that's for, great. And, uh, and he'll for the whole group, not just myself. He'll do a terrific job tonight as a keynote speaker. Absolutely. Barry uh, Clayman, uh, a former neighbor, a former uh, friend, I should say. Uh, former player. softball player. A softball player. You also did the stats for me when I did the uh, radio basketball broadcast not, and not basketball. Football. Basketball. But uh, the thing that he's got going from him. Is he married Gail? That's right. Absolutely. And, and the most important asset for a governor is a spouse. And the spouse is right beside that's the governor. That's why Karen has done such a great She's job. Incredible. She's well, incredible. That's incredible. Our favorite, our music. That's our favorite song. That means we're coming to a close. It's called What a Wonderful World. It's Louis Armstrong that sang it. And he did it with the dignity that it deserves. This is Dave Clifton on behalf of Rona Van. Bidding you farewell from the Rhode Island Convention Center, the site for the multi-district conference. Yes, it's all about Rotary and the good things we do. 
And Louis Armstrong, you may be saying the song, but it's Rotarians around the world that are making it happen. Go forth to serve, do it with the dignity that it deserves. And if you're going to do something to help others out, that's all, folks.